According to statistics, about 75% of people after the age of 50 adhere to an unhealthy diet. And it's not that people do it on purpose, but rather people don't think about the fact that many of the foods they have eaten throughout their lives are actually ruining their body. And people got used to these products when they were 20 years old and everything went well. But after 50, such changes occur in the body that it is already necessary to really think about what foods we eat and what effect they have on our body. Because our nutrition directly affects our health and our well-being. And in this video I have collected those foods that need to be excluded from our diet and never return to them in a good way. So, the product that needs to be excluded in the very first place is refined sugar. If you are used to adding 3 teaspoons to sugar or coffee, then you definitely need to do something about it. If you can't imagine your life without a chocolate bar, without sweet pastries, without cakes, then you also need to think about something. If you ask a nutritionist which product is the most harmful to the human body, then today most experts will primarily say that it is refined sugar. And the problem here is not that, as they say, they get fat from sugar. Of course, this is also bad, but the list of harmful effects is not limited to this. And the main problem is that sugar in general is a pro-inflammatory substance. Permanent permanent microinflammation provokes the processes of aging and the formation of chronic diseases. It is sugar that is the very substance that will contribute to the formation of chronic diseases and premature aging. People who eat a lot of sugar, even outwardly begin to look older than their years. And in fact, the processes are not limited to external manifestations, they affect internal processes too, organs and tissues of the body age and get sick. And of course, it is necessary to minimize not only the sugar itself, but also all sugar-containing products. And it used to be assumed that the main factor of our nutrition that provokes them is cholesterol. But to date, cholesterol has been pushed into the background, and nutritionists already see a threat from sugar in the foreground, because its sharp rises and jumps in the blood largely contribute to atherosclerosis, the formation of cholesterol plaques and blood clots. But here you will ask a reasonable question, and how much is it possible and advisable to completely exclude sugar from our diet? In practice, this is almost impossible, because whatever we buy in the store, as a rule, sugar is added there. You even buy canned beans, there's sugar there too, so there's literally no hiding from it and no getting anywhere. And here it may not be very right to reach fanaticism either. Scientists determine a relatively safe dose of sugar, this is 30 grams per day. That's up to 30 grams per day, in principle you can eat without much harm to our body. If you can reduce it to zero, then honor and praise you. But I must say this is a very, very difficult event, to completely reset the sugar. Therefore, up to 30 grams is already a good level. And here it is necessary to take into account, of course, all the hidden sugar, which is contained almost everywhere. And if we read the contents of the label, we will see and understand it very quickly. Let's go further. The next point is any products with a high salt content. Salt contributes to the leaching of calcium from our body, and as a result can provoke osteoporosis. Also, excessive salt intake can provoke kidney disease. And most importantly, excessive salt intake provokes cardiovascular diseases. But here you will ask a very reasonable question, how can you live without salt, because the body will not survive without salt. Yes, it's true. Salt is really necessary for our body. And it's all about the dosage of salt. As they say, all poison, all medicine, depending on the dose, and with salt too. Therefore, if we completely exclude salt from our diet, nothing good will happen, just as if we consume too much of it. So what is the optimal golden mean? Scientists are puzzled by this question and there is an answer. To date, it is recommended to consume 2 to 5 grams of salt per day. This is the optimal dosage that will provide your body with the necessary volume of electrolytes, give a normal water salt balance and everything will be fine. But the problem is that a modern person consumes, as a rule, much more than 5 grams of salt per day. A modern person easily consumes 10 to 15 grams and that's where the problems begin. And again, in youth, in youth, it all goes unnoticed, but with age it already begins to bother and cause diseases. So that's what you need to do with salt. If you have salt on the table and you add it to every breakfast, lunch and dinner, 
then remove the salt from the table. This means that you oversalt your food and oversaturate your body with sodium. Secondly, in any cooking, when you add salt, you add it, but within reasonable limits, not very much. And thirdly, of course, all products that contain excessive amounts of salt must be minimized. This will include, for example, all sausage products, various sausages, 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 ham, ham, and so on. If we take a few slices of sausage, then we can easily exceed the daily sodium requirement. Many sauces also contain a lot of salt. And of course various chips and french fries. The next item is flour. Of course, to completely exclude flour from our diet is perhaps too extreme. If you are ready for such a feat, then it's great. If you are not ready, then it is understandable. Then you just need to limit it within reasonable limits. That is, do not overeat buns, cupcakes, pastry, and so on. It is better to give preference to yeast-free bread, or you can have a little pasta. And it's all about the glycemic index again. The glycemic index is a coefficient that shows the level of rise in blood sugar after consuming a particular product. And the higher it is, the worse, roughly speaking. The more harmful the product is, it provokes obesity, cardiovascular diseases, permanent microinflammation, premature aging, and so on along the list. In general, that's why sugar has a high glycemic index, and broccoli has a low one. But all flour products have the same high glycemic index, about the same as sugar. In fact, these are again easily digestible carbohydrates. It is even worse if we are dealing with confectionery products like cupcakes, where, in addition to flour, there is also a good portion of trans fats, because the modern confectionery industry is very much already mired in this. And of course a large dose of sugar. What kind of cupcake without sugar? In fact, it used to be said this way, salt is white death. To date, nutritionists have come to the conclusion that there are already three of these white deaths, salt, sugar, and flour. And in fact, these three points revealed this topic. Subscribe to the channel so as not to miss new releases. See you later.